Okay, hello, you trader nerds and you Mr. TikTokers. We got everybody together. And uh, for a very exciting little uh, combined session today. So I'm very excited to introduce to everybody. You know him, you love him. He's the myth, the man, the legend. The man that taught me everything that there is to know about the 11X trades, whether it be 111 or 112. The man himself, Tom King. Hello, Tom. Hey, good to be here. Thank you. How are you today? Doing fantastic. Even for in your honor, too, just uh, so you know, I, I wore my, my Piggly Wiggly shirt. So. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Abby, listen, Tom <laughs> King is wearing his Piggly Wiggly shirt. My daughter works there, as a matter of fact. I just went to Piggly Wiggly to get Milo's tea, and it's delicious. Just in your honor, I thought it'd be appropriate to wear my Piggly Wiggly shirt today. Well, I appreciate you doing that, Tom. Well, Tom, uh, listen, y'all, I kind of uh, didn't want to catch Tom by surprise yesterday, but uh, I have watched his video probably five or six times on the long-term 112 trade. And I found it fascinating. And uh, as I've told a lot of you, I'll be trading a friend's account. It's going to be about $450,000, $475,000. So what I told Tom that I would love to see him do is to kind of show us how that would work in a half million dollar account. And we can apply it to other accounts as well. But I was like, hey, Tom, uh, since I'm going to be doing this, it'd be great to see how this kind of campaign would work in that account. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, be something good to jump into today. Uh, I think the, the key is figuring out what your core strategy is going to be. If that's going to be the, the 112, the 111, the 121, or whatever uh, you want to do, just making sure you have a, you know, a core strategy that you could build off of uh, from there, to me, the one one two has been a perfect core strategy uh, to stick into most accounts. It's pretty resilient, uh, you know. In this downtrend, it's doing fantastic. Uh, it's a very resilient trade. Obviously, overall markets usually go up, uh, so it benefits with as markets go up. But it also gives you some some benefit when uh, some extra benefit when markets go down. So I think setting it up in an IRA uh, is you know, all of my IRAs, all of my family's IRAs, that's what they're all based on is the the one one two trade. Uh, and there's a lot of different versions that you can put in a couple different types of adjustments. but the win the thing I like about the long term version versus the original sixty day version is you know at one hundred and twenty days, you're spending less buying power per DTE if you were. Uh, so you're getting a little bit more credit, but you're spending less buying power overall. Uh, a normal 112 might take up, you know, 8K in buying power in an IRA, uh, whereas the long-term 112 might take up more like 9,600. So it's only a little bit more buying power for a lot more income. So I think it makes more sense, uh, you know, to do than versus the, the shorter term 112 trades. Well, and one thing that I like too that you pointed out in the video is because you're going out farther in time and you're doing that five delta naked put, you can get much farther away from the money than you were that if you were doing the 60 day. Yeah, 100%. So most of my current 112 trades, especially into like December and January, you're looking at 3550, 3700 on the on the naked puts. I mean, not that we can't go there, but we're 60, you know, or 600, 700 points away from some of those strikes down at 3,700 or so. So you've got a long way to go. Get doesn't mean you can't get there, but I like the fact that I can get farther away. I can get more credit and it uses less buying power. I mean, and I think the one thing uh, uh, you and I chatted briefly on it, and I think I mentioned it in your Discord yesterday was. I just don't like to trade that much. Uh, so I don't want to put one on every day, take it off. I don't even want to do a weekly if I don't have to. So because you're putting these on and they last for 120 days, uh, you know, if you take off the the naked puts, I usually do it around 95% or so, but you know, whether it's 90%, 80%, whatever you want to do of taking naked puts off, you're still 90 day, you know, you're still going to be in the trade for a good 75 to 90 days, but you don't really have to do anything. I just want to put it on, especially in an IRA. And I don't want to actively trade it. I don't want that to pay anybody commissions. I just want to put a trade on that lasts me three months is going to be pretty solid. And I don't ever have to make too many adjustments on it. Good. I like it. And uh, let me ask you this. It's one of the things that 
we kind of found in one of our sessions uh, uh, last week was that, you know, I've been doing the one to one version where the things are, are calendarized. But uh, we found that Stacy and James were not having the uh, drawdowns that I was having for the uh, grind down market that we've been in of late, which was really kind of telling, you know, that um, it kind of operated differently. Now, I'm not saying that my positions are were not as safe, but it was kind of it affects the psyche a little bit when you're holding the position, even though your nakeds are are safe because that put debit spread is so much farther away from the money. Yeah, because I think you do like nine delta ish something yeah, like that on naked delta. puts. Mm -hmm. I mean, a difference in, a, in just in a 60 day trade, a nine delta and a five delta, just doing the 60 day trades is what, 37.50 and 30, and it's almost 200 point difference in a 60 day trade. And when you look at, like I said, 120 day trade uh, around there, the difference is going to be what, uh, 37.50 ish, 3,700 and 34.50. So and you're talking 250 to 300 points farther away when you talk 300 points on a $4,300 uh, asset uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty ex, you know a lot of extra room that, that you have to go about 300 on you know well today we're up but 4395 uh, I mean that's it's I'm 7% farther away than you are and there's no losing sleep on I mean you have to fall 7% farther on mine and I mean, nothing wrong with the, you know, the one, two, one, it's like interesting strategy. Uh, I know Victor come up, comes up with, you really got to see a pretty good sell off anyway, to get those put debit spreads doing a whole lot of anything for you. But in the meantime, at nine Delta, you kind of have a lot more pain on the naked puts and a lot bigger increase in your buying power. Uh, if volatility spikes on you and the market drops, both, you know, all those things happening, uh, it's going to affect those positions a lot more. And now you've got to start figuring on, do I want to put hedges on? I don't really want to put hedges on. I don't really see a need to hedge a one, one, two. Uh, doesn't mean you can't. Doesn't mean people here don't go running home and pull your hedges off. Uh, if you want a black swan hedge, knock yourselves out. Uh, but if I've got a 20% downside protection where my naked put is, what the heck are you putting on a, a you know, a hedge for so there's really no need to hedge something that's a five delta uh, put now if that gets up to 30 delta okay we'll take a look at it but i think what you do is you get a lot of um uh, let's see i was reading something and i got um uh, distracted there uh, Igor says you get a bit more decay by going closer at the money on the naked short puts but if the market rolls over these puts will take more heat and buying power uh, will rise more. Right. And someone uh, someone also asked, Tom, with the 112, do you have two naked five delta puts? That is correct, right, Tom? That is correct. That's the two in the 112. Okay. And the, with the 112 that he's doing, he was doing what we did with the 60-day, is the put debit spreads are in the same expiration as the naked puts. Yeah, I played around with that a bit. And I think some members of, you know, the, the Mr. Top Tick Discord and Igor's in, in with me uh, there. So he may chime in a bit here. Um, he's the smart one. So uh, he, he can give you a little bit more insights on the technical uh, and stuff that happens. But when you look at putting this on farther out, you know, as, as you move away uh, into the longer time period, again, it, it's going to give you a lot you know, more secure piece, but you can figure out how you want to configure those one, one, twos. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can choose all kinds of different uh, deltas. You can choose all kinds of different widths. Uh, there's a lot you can do. We do about four or five different versions of it. Uh, some are shorter, some are longer term, but when you look at Hey, do I want to put on the put debit spread for only 75% of the time? Why? So what's the what's the purpose of, of that uh, to begin with? Is the purpose because, well, I'm going to close those naked puts off. So why not close the only have a put debit spread that lasts as long as the naked puts? Well, I like the fact that I have put debit spreads sitting there right now uh, that are that the naked puts have been long gone and I'm sitting on a 50 wide put debit spread 
uh, that's making me money. Had I put them on diagonalized or shorter term time period, they'd be gone by now and I wouldn't have the negative delta that it gives me. And up until what, 10 o'clock this morning, everybody wanted negative delta. Uh, so uh, now, now all of a sudden, you know, there's a market, uh, a market bounce today. We're up 54 points and everybody thinks the, the rally's back on. But I like the fact that I have that protection of a 50 wide for a long time and let the, let the decay on that happen so that as we get closer to expiration, those things don't have a lot of extrinsic and any move down is going to be magnified by that put debit spread. But again, anybody can do whatever versions they feel comfortable with. Tom, one of my suspicions about this trade is, and you may confirm it or, or, or say that it's not so, but I've had this suspicion forever that these things are actually designed where you can actually take the naked put to expiration. I mean, you talked about taking it off at 95 or 90%, mm -hmm. but really uh, many times there's no need to take it off in it. I mean, you can actually let it go to expiration. Yeah, totally fine. I mean, it's it's built. They're built if, when when put on the way we 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 normally do them. It's a twenty percent return on margin trade. Uh, so if they go to expiration and they they come off, you know, you're, you're making twenty percent in four months. It's five percent a month or so. It's a you know good good return trade uh, on your money uh, there too. And there's there's no reason to take the naked puts off. The only reason I really take the naked puts off, well, there's two reasons. I mean, the two reasons to take those naked puts off early. Some people like to do it earlier. And if you've got a larger account, you can take those things off at 80%, 90%, and, and then put another one on right there as soon as you take one off and just keep stacking them. You can do it a lot of different ways. The way I'm doing it and laddering the number of them that I, I ladder out, I just like the fact that normally... I will close two of the naked puts at 95%, uh, two of the different 112 trades. I usually have eight running. Uh, so, so two of them don't cost me a penny. Uh, so I'm really only paying buying power on six of them at usually any given time. I and mean, right now I think I have seven uh, because one's at like 90% uh, today. But uh, in a week or so, I'll probably take that one off and I'll only be paying for six uh, at any given time, even though I'll have eight running. Uh, and I have two PDSs that that work for free. But yeah, you can certainly leave it on. Again, most markets go up uh, most of the time. Uh, so leaving it on to expiration and taking the full, we call it tail profit uh, that's in there. Getting that full tail profit is great. Uh, but last year in the Mr. Top Tick thing, we were, when we were doing this, my portfolio, the Income Navigator portfolio in there, uh, we were up 80% last year as a whole. And the reason for that, the only reason we were up so much last year, I mean, I usually target 30% or so a year. That's our goal. The only reason we were up 80% last year was that we landed in the trap 65% of the time last year, uh, which means you got all of that extra juice of a 50 wide uh, put debit spread. You landed in that 65% of the time in a down market. Uh, that will juice your portfolio like like nothing else. Yeah, so it's really a resilient trade. And if, you know, what we're hearing, if we are uh, anticipating going into a slowdown at some point, even though it doesn't seem like it now, uh, this seems like a perfect trade to have on. Yeah, so it, it works really, really well. Uh, so if I'm laying this out for an IRA, now IRAs and trading accounts, depending on whether you're on, uh, you know, Reg T, uh, you know, standard trading account, or you're in an IRA account where you're not getting the benefit. It's difficult to do this on anything but ES because you're just in an IRA. You've got to have a very large IRA if you're going to be running it on SPX or something. So if you don't have the ability to trade futures, uh, it's not really a great trade. We do some different versions in our uh, Discord on it. So we do a, a variety of different versions. Uh, Igor puts on what he calls a, a 112 bear trap, which is an SPX version. Uh, so if you have a trading account, that's a great version uh, to do, especially if you're larger, uh, have a larger account or larger portfolio. If you're in an IRA or a smaller portfolio, then sticking with ES or MES or something along those lines is going to be a little bit better for you. But in an IRA, most typical IRA, and I'm using Tasty Trade as an example, and I'll take my IRAs as an example. If I'm putting on a long-term 112 trade, 
Again, I'm going out 180 days. I'm putting on the put debit spread with the longs around 25 delta, going 50 wide, put on the naked puts at five delta. Uh, overall, right now, if you guys are modeling that or you put that on right now, you're going to get, you know, if you want, I can pop one up and do one, but um, I don't know if that's helpful no, or not. I, I, you said 180 days. You mean 120. 120. Right? 120. Yeah, okay. So if you're doing 120 days uh, on those, and I've got it where you can share your screen if you want to, Tom. Yeah, I'll, I'll pop one up. Let me uh, let me do that real quick. And I'll talk while I'm making a change here. But That naked woman above your right shoulder is kind of distracting me a little it, bit. But uh, yeah, over there, see her. I don't know what that book is. <laughs> I don't know. What is that? I don't know. It's a book. It's uh, like one of those cherubs, <laughs> those little fat kids with the bow and arrow or something. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, I never really looked at any of those. All right, so let's jump in. I'll grab the screen and let's jump in just putting one on and we can get a sense of if I had a $500,000 IRA, this is how I would set it up. Now, it's going to take you four months to set this up. Okay. Uh, because you're only you're not going to put all eight of them on today. Otherwise, you got all the same strikes and your risk level will be um, will be off the charts. So well, I'm really curious to see this, how, how it's going to play out. All right, so uh, let's let's jump in here. I'll clean this one off. We'll go out to uh, 117. Again, you're, I usually am pretty good about, and trust me, the Discord members are usually pretty good about saying, are we putting one on today? So as soon as the 120 DTE uh, expiration rolls around, uh, I someone's going to remind me, hey, are we putting one on today? Uh, but for the most part, I'm looking for 120 days. If I was doing it today, it would be 117. I, I usually won't go past it by too much, but uh, I want to be in the in the ballpark. I'll pick around the 24 delta, go five wide. I like to stick around eight bucks on the debit. Uh, this one's 825. I'm not going to fret over that uh, here. Uh, then I'll go down to about five delta. It's about 15. Get Grab two of those. This is pretty consistent. Uh, about 22 bucks to $23 is usually what you're going to see in credit. You guys all know if you're using ES, it's a 50 multiple. So you're really going to take in about 1110 bucks uh, or so on this trade. So uh, your trade's 1110. Uh, and if we took a look at this thing, I'm not a big fan of Tasty's analyzed tabs, but uh, here's, here's the trade itself. So here's what it looks like. You're out 117 days. $22.25 is your credit uh, that you're going to get. Now you can see, let's let's move this thing to uh, an IRA. Now you guys can see all my IRAs, but it's going good. So if, if we were doing this in an IRA, you can see the buying power in an IRA is going to be around $11,000. Uh, so I got about $11,000 in an IRA. Uh, that's your buying power. In a, a trading account, you know, if you remember, that was probably closer to six grand uh, to eight grand, somewhere in there. I'd say eight grand on this. Uh, so one trade is going to take up 10 grand in buying power. So, you know, we'll keep track of that number uh, that in an IRA, uh, I'm going to use up, let's just say 11 grand on this trade. And if I land in the tail up on the top here at expiration, we're going to take in 1100 uh, and ten bucks. So eleven hundred and ten bucks is what we get uh, up in the, up in the tail here. If we dip down into the big fat trap here, uh, we're going to make thirty six hundred dollars, which is your fifty wide, which is your two hundred twenty five hundred dollars plus the eleven ten, uh, or now it's eleven thirteen as it keeps moving around. But that's your thirty six hundred thirty six hundred dollars. You drop down here or get close to it, those put debit spreads are going to start to pay off. And I can go all the way down here to about 3460 before I start to, you know, really, you know, get assigned or, or something like that. So 3460 from here from 4392, 4392 minus again 3460, 932, almost a thousand point drop. And that doesn't mean we can't go there, but a thousand point drop uh, right now, uh, I would feel pretty confident. This is going to net me about, that's about a 21% drop in the market. So the markets have to drop 21% for me to even worry about assignment. 
you know, or worry about what to do there. I have other stops. There are other things that we can do. If the market starts to fall hard, you can see the T plus zero orange line here. You can see how this does steepen. So if we fall fast, this is going to go negative and it's going to go negative fairly quickly uh, on you. Uh, it's not going to be a problem for the most part unless we drop 20%. But if you drop 5%, 10% in a, in a short period of time, um, it'll be a little red for a while. But uh, you're, you're okay. So here's your, you know, here's your IRA. If you consider that you're going to make $1,110 on every one lot of these that you do, that's going to take about $11,000 uh, in buying power. For me, when I size trades, I use a 2% max loss as my sizing mechanism. Okay. I'm willing to take up to a 2% max loss on a, on a trade. So of Tasty Trades, things that they talk about, there's probably only three things that, that I really agree with for them, but one of them is trade small, trade often. And trading small to me is keeping my losses to 2% or less. So how would I size this in a $500,000 IRA? And hopefully I'm there. If you need to interrupt, anybody got it? I can't keep up with chat. So uh, maybe Igor will jump on those while they're, they're coming. But in a $500,000 account, well, a 2% loss would, would essentially be a $10,000 loss. So my maximum contracts I would use on this would be three. I might not do three quite in an IRA yet, uh, but you might size up to it because uh, I think you were just under 500,000. Uh, so if you're like 470, 480, well, that max loss would be around nine grand, which means maybe two contracts. So two contracts would be what I would do. My max loss typically would be, I would close it if I hit my max income, this 36, uh, 361. So if I was doing two contracts, your max loss here is 7,230. In the tail up here, you're making 2,023 and I'm using 2,100 in buying power. This is how I would size it for that IRA. So I would be doing two contracts in that $500,000 IRA. I'd be doing two contracts. I'd be taking in $2,200 roughly I would be using 21,000 in buying power and my max loss, because I would close it at a 1X max profit, it would be 7,200. Make sense? Yes, makes sense. Okay, so that's how I'm sizing because I'm, now if you want to do more frequently, because I know you like to put these on a couple times a week and take some stuff off and, and manage more actively. I don't like to manage that actively, but if you'd wanted to cut the size in half and put them on, weekly instead of every two weeks when another 120 day comes around you could certainly do that it may stretch out you know some of your risk a little bit better um or but it's also going to make you manage a lot more trades i don't want to manage 16 i want to just manage eight uh, so i'm putting them on every two weeks when another 120 dte comes around i'm putting them on every two weeks so Knowing what we just went through if i'm putting this on every two weeks that's going to end up to 120 days if I had the full complement, never took anything off, that would be eight, eight trades. So two a month, four months, eight total trades. So eight trades are going to use up about 21K in buying power uh, each. Uh, so that, you know, you're about $160,000 in buying power. And we like to keep buying power under 50%. I think you do as well. Yes, yes. Uh, so if you have a four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar IRA, um, you know you're going to use no more than maybe two hundred and thirty-seven thousand of that uh, for buying power. Maybe we go up to three contracts here. If we did three contracts, we would be using uh, about three three thirty thousand times eight two hundred forty. I mean, we would be right at the fifty line. So you're right at the level at four seventy-five or five hundred. You're right at a level where you could probably go with three contracts, but you wouldn't be doing no other trades technically in that account, uh, but that would be 50% of your buying power. So if I did three contracts, uh, I think it'd work for you, but your max loss to me gets a little bit over my 2%. So I'm gonna stick down and this is how I'll probably uh, use up the, uh, the trade. So eight of these are working. Every two weeks, one's gonna come off, right? Once I get to eight, Every two weeks, one would come off if you closed nothing early. So every two weeks on this trade, 
assuming that we land in the uh, in the tail itself, you're going to make twenty two hundred dollars every two weeks using one hundred and sixty thousand in buying power. Everybody, everybody's on, on board with that. Hold Everybody on, listening? let me make sure. I'm a little slow. I went to the University of Alabama, Tom. So, uh, if we, um, I thought we were putting on two every month. Yeah. So I will put I will put one on every, a, a trade on every two weeks when there's a new 120. So I'll be putting okay. two trades on a month. Okay. These are 120 days out, so they're three, they're four months out. So in before one, it's going to take four months for one to come off. So I put two on a month for four months. I'm going to have eight eight trades working. Got it. Two two a month times four months. Okay, so if my max contract is two, then I'm going to put two on every two weeks or one on every two weeks. I would be putting two on every two weeks. Got it. Okay. And your two here, again, for two of them, you're, you're buying power is 21,000 to put on two contracts mm -hmm. each time. So 21,000 times eight total trades, it's going to be about 160, 165,000 in buying power to start with. Got it. One of the Bye. unique things too, real, real quick, and uh, Igor can go through this more at some point if anybody's interested, but these start out as, you can see here, these are positive Delta trades, but not hugely positive, but they are positive Delta trades. As 112s age, they start to become negative Delta trades, okay? Because your naked puts are, are starting to come off, especially if you're moving down, your put debit spread remains uh, intact. Uh, so you're starting to see as the longer you leave these on, the actual uh, Delta in that trade starts to change a bit. Uh, so as you leave these on, you go from a positive delta to a negative delta. So it really keeps you pretty delta neutral overall uh, in your in your account. But yes, you're, so you'll be spending one hundred sixty five thousand to put on two contracts twice a month for for four months. Got it. And okay. so what you would do is you would just say, "Hey, Bob, just wait till the one hundred twenty rolls up, and that's when you put it on, and then it'll roll up every two weeks." Right. And that happens around the 15th and the 30th of every month, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, so today's what, the 6th? So it really could have been put on on the 3rd to hit the 120. So right around the 1st of the month and the 15th of the month, somewhere around there is when you're putting these on. And then you're taking them off uh, in four months later. And you're just napping while you do it. And as they come off, you should now, assuming they don't go in the trap at all, you're going to be netting 2200 bucks. So every month you should be generating $4400 in your IRA using about $160,000 of your BP. Make sense? Yep. I'm perfectly on board. So 4400 4, yep. on a $475,000 IRA. Uh, it's like 1% a month or something like that. Uh because you're not maxed on your buying power. Uh if you were closer to 50% on these, you could probably go higher than that. I'm not advocating for people to risk a whole lot. If for me, I'm a little more, I'm, a, I'm, I'm less risk averse. So I'm fine with, I would probably size it up just a fraction more and do three contracts. And I'd probably be generating now the three contracts using would take 32,000 in buying power. 32,000 times the A would be 240, which would be half of my 500,000. I would be fine there. Uh, my max loss is 10 grand, tad over, but at five grand, it's pretty much right on. So if I was doing a 500,000, even you're a little bit short of that, I think you said, but if I was at 500,000, um, I would be doing three, probably three contracts of these. So I would be generating about 6,600 a month in the account just using this strategy alone, and I probably wouldn't do anything else. And 6,600 a month on 500,000 uh, is uh, about 1.3, 1.5% a month. So you're about 18% a year. Yeah, that sounds- Assuming really you never go in the trap. Right, you never go in the trap. And if we go in the trap, that's a great problem because then you're going to juice those returns like you did last year. At right. Right. And if you think we're and feel that we're heading towards any sort of a you know recession, which I think we probably are, uh, and some sort of a you know an event potentially coming up, it ain't happening today, but 
Uh, if you think sometime next year there's some going to be some significant downward moves, these perform absolutely fantastic in those time frames. Uh, and I think well, most of our members would be uh, say the same thing that you know these during this last move down, these held up great. Some strangle trades that we do didn't you know struggled a bit more, but uh, in the moves because they were some serious moves. But the these one one twos they're so resilient and they. They anchor your portfolio. One thing, Tom, maybe what do you think about this? Since I'm almost at that point of between two or three, couldn't I split the baby and say, okay, this two weeks I'm doing three, the next two weeks I'm doing two, then I'm doing three, then I'm doing hundred percent. Yeah. Or you could keep it at two and be putting on some regular one, one twos or something like that in the meantime to use some of that other buying power because this is your core. This is generating that core money. So if you're, again, generating 4,400 a month, that's not going to get you to your, you know, your 20% goal or so, uh, 4,400 a month. However, it's about 1% a month. That's a good foundation, but then you're going to have to juice it with something else. So yeah, you could do a two, a three, a two, you know, or, you know, two, and then a three, and then a two, and then a three. And what I would consider doing if that's what you're looking at is, you know, if it's a decent down move, maybe that's when I put on three. Uh, if we're moving strongly higher, maybe I'm putting on two. Two contracts in a stronger up move and three contracts in a down move. Yeah, good. Or, or you can just do one in between. I mean, you could add a third entry for the month in week, you know, instead of week one and week two or week three, you said doing it, you could add an extra one, one, two in there. Uh, so you could always add an extra one here or there. Or as if you didn't want to do that big and kind of like Mark brought up, he says, so if this would be my core strategy, what can I do during the downtime? I want regular stimulation. So what we do is we trade a lot of strangles. Um, so that's what juices our portfolio a bit is we get some extra, you know, the cores, the one, one, two, and then we may trade some strangles. We may trade some regular one, one, twos. Uh, we have some, what we call big ass one, one, two, which is a, a much more hedge like version. Uh, we came up with the FB one, one, two. So we have a variety of different, uh, versions of this that you can trade. Uh, so a lot of, especially on our members in the Mr. Top Tick Discord. A lot of them will trade strangles. They may trade credit spreads. Uh, they may do a little bit of a little bit of anything to keep themselves engaged and to make that extra that extra money. And this is an IRA account we're talking about. So you're talking about making 18% in an IRA with this strategy. If this is a trading account, okay, now you're starting to talk about 24 to 27%. Uh, a year using this strategy alone because the IRA is going to be much more limiting on your buying power. But when I'm putting this trade on and I'm doing it in a uh, in a standard trading account versus an IRA uh, on that buying power, I mean, now I'm using, uh, you know, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of eight, you know, 6K BP on this. So I would make the same amount of money but only using half the buying power or a little bit less than half the buying power. And so, Tom, one thing that I could do if you're sitting there going, Oh God, I got wait, got to wait two weeks to put on a trade. What you could do is plug some of those holes and do some in the micros, right? I mean, you could do, you know, put you, on you, you certainly could do that. Micros. I mean, you, all depends on what your trade plan is telling you that you want to do. Uh, I'm not telling anybody to be a one trick pony and that this is the only trade they should do. To me, it's the core foundation. It uses the most VP for me. I think you can make it a core. And in my IRAs here, all I have is this exact trade that we're looking at right now, sized appropriately. And then I usually have one or two strangles um, that are working that are very low delta strangles in an IRA, um, you know, like five, six delta strangles. Uh, which are usually fairly safe, but uh, you know, gold this week been a couple of us um, on it with the, with the drop in gold. But for the most part, I'm just supplementing some of this with just low delta, 
90 day strangles uh, that we put on, but you could, you could certainly do some MES uh, in there, or you could just do smaller ES, do it more frequently, uh, whatever it takes to get to that amount. Uh, but I think that's where for your size account, that's where I, that's how I, I would construct it first. Then I would see, okay, I have some buying power. So the next one I might put on a three contract. So I think the alternating between two and three until the account grows, uh, it would be great if you hit a couple traps in the meantime, uh, you're right on the cusp of doing three contracts with that size account. If you were exactly 500,000, I would say do three contracts at a time and I probably wouldn't do a whole lot else. But if you want to stay more engaged in the market uh, with as people want to do, then lower the contracts on this and trade whatever else your trade plan tells you you can do. As long as you're making money, there's a lot of different ways to to, to make that money. Here's what I like about the strategy, Tom, is that you the bull in the bullish markets, you are going to still do you're going to do extremely well with this particular trade. Now, the bull market, if you're considering the SP 500 to be your benchmark, the SP 500 could possibly uh, you know exceed your return in this particular account. But during the bear markets is where this thing is really going to fly. And if you look, were to look at this trade compared to the SP 500 over a period of five or 10 years, I believe that we should greatly outperform the SP 500. A hundred percent. I mean, if you look, while you look back, what's the average return of the S and P over time? Was it 8%? Yeah. Eight, nine running there. Okay. Well, let's, you know, you're going to have some bull markets, but in bull markets, these are fantastic because they can come off quick. If you close those naked puts, you could put a new one on and add more trades as you're moving up. But, uh, it's very rare that you would underperform the S and P, but it certainly can. Uh, so just take a you know taking a look. What is that S and P this year? Uh, year to date, S and P is up thirteen percent. Even if the S and P continued at this now again, there's an IRA and there's a trading account. Two different returns on one one twos, simply because of the buying power that that you're using. In a trading account, you're you're going to return closer to, you know, twenty four hundred bucks a month using thirty two thousand dollars. So if I had a five hundred thousand dollar trading account, uh, I would be making a, a ton more uh, than an IRA. But even an eighteen percent in an IRA, I think it was pretty good. And then thirty to thirty two percent in your trading account, just doing this strategy alone, I, I think makes makes good sense. And you're up what a year to date. 13% on SPY, you're up 15% in, you know, the last year alone. So you still, even in the last year, we still haven't beaten it. Um, and in the past five years, I think it's up 56%. Uh, so if I'm looking at the S&P over the last five years, it's up 56%, which is nice. Okay. But 56% is only 10%, 11% a year. I think you're going to be pretty hard pressed to beat a 20 some percent return a year in, but you know, with anything else that's out there without actively trading, if you're great at day trading, whatever, knock yourselves out uh, for it. zero DTE, whatever stuff goes on. Uh, well, we find, we find other things to, to kind of juice the return. And another thing I like about this Tom, you know, they always say that, Oh man, if you, if, People start over trading this strategy that the strategy won't perform. That's not applicable to this strategy. Who knows? I mean, it, it's hard to say. And uh, the one caveat I'll put in here is no strategy works forever. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there's no one strategy that works forever. Uh, this worked pretty good in both ups and down, down market. It worked fantastic in a down market. It worked great in an up market. So uh, you know, no one strategy will work forever. At some point, who knows what happens in the markets? Uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, certainly a, a black swan event or something like that. Well, that just may not perform so well. Uh, so, but as soon as that happens, the volatility is up. And you also got to consider that we've been putting this on all year and uh, doing doing pretty well. Uh, I don't know if I've got some year to, to date figures on it, but 
understanding that in a trading account, I'm probably closing two to three of these a month. You know, we were making four grand, something like that a month using only around uh, $80,000 to, to $100,000. And you're making four grand a month on that money. Uh, it, it's good money overall, uh, but it gives you a chance to, uh, you know, to increase and, or change the amount of trades that you have. But I think you need, just need to have something that's a core and I'm not gonna fuss with it. Uh, you could maybe also sprinkle in whatever other trades you like. I mean, I know some of the stuff that you have been doing with, with Victor's one, two, one and some other, if you wanna throw one of those in to use some buying power, you can. And okay, now maybe you're using one of those or two of, I don't know how many contracts, I don't really know the buying power on on those and on, in an IRA, but, uh, you know, maybe in an IRA that's taking 10 grand or something. So you can put one of those on a month uh, as well too. And there's your additional kicker. Uh, but I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to outperform it uh, without really being a very active trader that's got some kind of a strategy. So I, I think it should last for a while, but again, no one strategy will ever work forever. And that's why all of us, I mean, Tom, I know you're the same way. We're always experimenting. We're always tinkering. We're always trying to find something else, you know, uh, just to keep us, um, you know, keep us in the game in case we are blown out on something. We'll, uh, we'll survive with something else. Hey, James has got a question. Go ahead, James. Hello, Bobby. Uh, Tom, uh, much respect. Uh, Tom, I don't think I've ever talked to you, but uh, a lot of Watched a lot of your videos, and uh, good job on all that. Uh, so, if anybody is interested, uh, I can I can and I did this with you, Bobby. Uh, I think last week, but I can screen share and so show a mature campaign. I've hidden my account information, but I can show the risk graph. Oh, minute. come on, James, do like I do. Show it all. <laughs> You're braver than I am, Bobby. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm dumber than anybody, you know. Go ahead, James. Yeah, share. I'd we'll uh, love to see it. That come up? Yes. Yes. See okay. It. So I've uh, uh, been putting these on for some time, uh, the last three months. And so you can see as the campaign matures, this T plus zero line here is actually, if the market goes down, it's increasing in value. So coupling that with uh, strategies with the strangles and, and other strategies, if the market comes down, it, uh, it, it, it softens and dampens that move uh, to the downside Plus, you have you still have um, you know the tail profit here. The other thing that that I'm experimenting with, and I, I would call this pin the tail on the bear, or bear trap tail pin, whatever is come come up here and um, you know in the five or six delta range, put a few of these, you know, sell a few a little bit of call premium. Not much, but a little bit. And just to try to enhance this tail profit a little bit. Well, the amazing thing about what you've shown here, James, is you're hoping for a 200-point move down in the E-mini. Look at that. I mean, if you go from the 4380 that you're now, you would love to go to 4180. Look at that. Yes. So, <laughs> I mean, Look at that. P&L at expiration, $430,000 and the, at uh, – Today would be up one hundred forty nine thousand. I mean, you're you're wanting a two hundred point pullback. Yes, and if we even, you know, if we go down further, uh, you know, we're reaching. Looks like Max is down here in the thirty nine hundreds. I would be getting nervous down there, um, but uh, it's there, and and the way this thing has been put on, and I've left a lot of those put debit spreads on, so. Uh, as time goes by, this T zero line just starts popping every day. It it, it really starts popping back here, and uh, 
So the one anyway, thing you that's a mature with this trade. And appreciate it, James. I mean, the one thing you don't want in this trade is you don't want a fast, hard down move. Uh, but I don't know when anyone would ever want a fast, hard down move in any trades. Uh, but you just you just don't want it to drop. You don't really want a two hundred point drop today. You want to you want a slow, methodical meltdown sell off that drops ten percent over like six months, like we did. Uh, you want that, and this thing is golden. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought a picture is worth a thousand words. Just for anybody that is curious of what the campaign looks like, maturing, that, that's it. I like oh. that. And James is trading, you're trading that in a larger account as well, James. How, how are you doing your rollout with the, with the trade? Well, uh, if, if the market is uh, uh, moving up, then I'm taking those uh, nakeds off at about 80% and going ahead and just, you know, reestablishing um, because, you know, that premium decay, I want to keep capturing that and, and you know, trying to squeeze out that last 20%, uh, it might take you two months, whereas the first 80% uh, profit happened in the first month or six weeks. So go ahead and try to move them up. But I, but there is, you know, I see the advantage also of waiting to a 90, 95%. Uh, it's just, um, you know, it, it, six, one, half a dozen of another, everybody's going to probably treat that differently. Yeah, I don't like closing at 80 or even 90 percent because I don't want to give money away. I'm not in a hurry for that money. So if I am in a hurry for the money, OK, close it at 80 percent. If we would have dropped today significantly, I was going to have some BP concerns. Uh, and if I have BP concerns, and OK, I've got some of them at 88 and 80 percent profit on the naked put. I would have just closed those naked puts uh, and alleviated any buying power concerns I had today. We rally, and so no issues there. But if you have any, you know, I'm trying to keep my BP in, in a, a good range, as you as you do, on a daily basis. That's what you know. I look at three things. I posted that video yesterday. I look at three things. I look at delta, I look at theta, and I look at my buying power percent. And that's pretty much it. That rules my world. I know, Bobby. I think you're fairly similar on that. So, um, and those three things rule my world. And if my if any one of those is getting out of control, then I'll start to look to to tweak it a little bit without going too crazy. But if you need to take it off earlier, you can. There's no problem. I just don't like to take it at 95, I think is good because essentially that allowed me to scale up to a larger number of contracts than I was doing now. Uh, so what you're gonna find, Bobby, is I would probably consider doing three contracts because I'm gonna tell you that by the time you're three months in, the first two that you did are gonna be at 95 you could close those naked puts. So you're only really going to be paying with buying power on six of the eight at any given point in time. Uh, and when you do that, now you're freed up. Or as soon as you're about to put on a new 120, you take off the oldest naked put. Uh, and it probably we would do the same exact thing. It would free up all the buying power you would need to put on a brand new trade. So you really would only need, ever need to pay for six at a time and have eight running. Good. Hey, and as far as juicing returns, you're at uh, Tasty, so you're using about 10% of your buying power in the BIL, right? Talk to us about that, Tom. Yeah, so that's a whole nother, I, I, I need a therapist for that and not just Ed. So um, I don't know, We've I've struggled with, with BIL. Uh, you can do treasury bills, you can do uh, bill, whatever you want to do uh, for it these things like bill really messes with your margin uh, a bit when it comes to futures, especially the way tasty and apex take care of it. Uh, Ed and I have had some, uh, some side meetings on it just to try to figure out my account a bit. Um, I'm going to, I had to really take a look at bill today because with bill taking up X percent of my buying power on the spike this morning of volatility on the drop, it starts to push me up to areas that I don't really want to be in. So taking off the bill uh, piece would be, uh, you know, the easiest way to just free up your buying power. It's bills great to earn a little bit of extra cash uh, on it. Igor and I were having a, a good chat uh, on 
creating a, an account, doing treasury bills. If you, but if you have, I think one of the best things, obviously large accounts help. The bigger your account, the nicer it is. If you're sitting with a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollar account, I don't think this stuff is really smart. Um, I don't think trying to squeeze bill in and doing all kinds of other things is good. I think you just keep trying to build that account. I've got ten thousand dollar accounts that we run uh, in the in the uh, group as well as fifty and a hundred. Uh, so as I think you got to be large enough to to take advantage of the buying power uh, from bill or those types of things. Uh, there because small accounts are affected way more on moves than larger accounts are. Uh, but having bill out there, you know, it, even on a reg T account, you're paying 25% margin. So if I used on a $300,000 account, if I wanted to use, let's say 10% of my margin, 10% uh, of my account uh, in margin, you know, which would be like 30,000 for $30,000, I can, I can spend uh, a decent amount. Uh, I can get about $120,000 worth of bill uh, making 5% a year, which is about 500 bucks a month using only 30,000. It's a pretty good return uh, on your money while you're just letting your money sit there on the side. I don't, and I think really good opportunities lie when you start to get up a little bit above 300, 400, 500,000 in a trading account and you've got PM uh, because uh, PM doesn't work beautifully with futures uh futures can can you know impact pm a bit so you have to have a little bit larger account uh with pm to trade futures correctly depending on the strategies you're using uh that's a whole nother session at, at some point in time but i think you can build yourself a really nice account using treasury bills uh and using 112 trades and sit back and relax but if you're like uh you know who's it mark i think wants to keep more engagement in the market I'm okay. Now I don't. I, I love engaging with the people in Discord, uh, so I probably do more trades than I probably should. Uh, but I also just like to sit on a beach or a boat and do nothing uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay not having to worry about what my account's doing, uh, and let you know grab uh, you know 15, 20 percent return on buying power on T bills uh, a year, as well as 15, 20 percent on. One, one, two trades. And if you get a large enough account like Igor runs and he does he does the same trades using SPX, okay, which is a much bigger uh, commitment uh, than ES uh, is if you try to put these on. But he's able to, be, when, you're, when you've got a PM account and you're able to do the one, one, twos uh, type trades using SPX or the bear traps as we, as we call them, if you can do that in a PM account, you can pad a ton uh, you can max out, I think, at uh, you know at the treasury bill level, uh, and really have a, a solid account with just two strategies. Hey, speaking of, of strategies, have you tried this in any other markets other than the SP five hundred? Uh, we do. Uh, so we have uh, right now. I have these running in uh, oil futures. I have them running in. Uh, Aussie dollar futures. I have it running in euro futures. Uh, I don't have any in gold, but I have done gold. Gold's a little tougher. Uh, I had one running in NASDAQ futures. I've had some running in uh, the Russell as well. So yes, you can do these. And that might be a, another way to juice your returns when you have some of that margin, because you're going to have different margin requirements in your IRA. So you may go to something like RTY uh, or NQ or something like that. And you may want to consider putting something on there or in oil. You know, I, I love doing them. I, oil is probably one of my favorite things to trade of all. Uh, love strangles in oil, love 112s in oil. Uh, you know, oil has been on a little bit of a tear, nice pullback. It's been a beautiful, beautiful trade for a long time. But yeah, you could absolutely put these on in any underlying that you want and just add that extra couple hundred bucks a month, 500 bucks a month. I always, so my core trades are a, one, a long term one, one, two. I supplement those with strangles. I also supplement it with one, one, two standard one, one, two trades on other futures, oil, gold, Forex, uh, you name it. By, so by putting those on, that's how we supplement that core income that we know is going to happen every month. We add more income to it uh, and we don't have a ton of trades to manage. 
Great. Well, we've gone for about an hour. Any any other closing uh, comments, Tom? You got on anything? Uh, no, I think like I said, uh, it's been a it's been a great trade. I hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you guys good. want to see what we're doing, you guys are also welcome to join into our our Discord as well. Uh, here and there's a lot of my members. I think that we brought over today. So uh, you got a big group here, 84 people on here. So uh, I'm giving you a giant giant group. Uh, so we got a bunch of people here. Check out what uh, Bobby and his team are doing. Uh, if you want, I'll pop something in the chat. If you want to see where we are, you can join up um, on it. But I think the, the key here is have a trade plan, which you know you and I are both giant advocates are. Uh, so have a trade plan, trade your plan, come up with a core strategy, whether that's the long-term 112, the 112, the 121, you know, the 131, the 44, whatever it is that you want to do. Have your core trades, stick to it, don't hop around until you've decided that after three or four months, hey, these type of trades aren't working or doing what I what I need to. Um, but we're a laboratory, like you said, uh, Bobby, and we're always trying to come up with something new, which I know you are. Um, all kinds of cool stuff happens from these uh, types of trades. There's always somebody that's going to come up with some idea like a Victor or somebody of, hey, let's try this. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but you know, you, you got to try different things. Absolutely. Tom, thank you for your time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And we will see y'all Monday. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bobby. Bye, Tom.